Welcome to Mimi's math channel. Today I will discuss permutations and combinations. What you see is the formula for permutations. And in this one, when you're looking at a word problem or scenario, you're looking for keywords like arrange because order does matter. For combinations, you will see that it looks like permutations. The exception is that you also have to divide out the R factorial because you don't want to duplicate it. In this situation, the order does not matter. So for P, just think of pick. And then for C, think of choose. In the formula, you'll see an N and an R. The N represents the total that you're starting with, so the total objects. And then R represents what's to be selected. Factorial just tells you that you're going to take the number that's shown for N and you're going to count in descending order until you get to one. And each of those numbers, you're going to end up multiplying by the number in front of it. So in the instance of N, if it was five, you would say five times four times three times two times one. In the bottom, in the denominator, you're going to take N and you're going to subtract it from R. So basically take these two and you're going to subtract them and then do the factorial for that. So in this case, if it was a five for N and then a three for R, you would say five minus three, which is two. Two factorial will be two times one. If you ever have an instance where there's a zero factorial, that does not mean zero. It means one. You just have to know this rule. And let's go ahead to the examples. For example one, we're asked to consider the letters in the word April. So the first thing you want to do is count the letters that you have. And then you want to ask yourself, is this going to be a combination or a permutation situation? Well, let's read what it asks. It says, how many ways can all of the letters be arranged? So I see that word arranged. That tells me it's going to be a permutation. So when I'm setting up my formula, I'm going to take the total letters, which I said was five, use permutation. And what am I choosing? I'm still choosing the five letters. What this means is N, which is this first five, is going to have a factorial. And then over it is going to be the difference between the two numbers that are shown here. So five minus five, I told you a few minutes ago, is zero factorial. And when you see zero factorial, that simply means one. You just need to know that. In the top, though, that means that I'm going to take five and multiply the numbers in descending order that come before it. So now, once I do that, the only thing that goes away are the ones. And multiplying that out, that's 120. You could have also used the fundamental counting principle, which tells us that we have five letters. One, two, three, four, five. And then in what ways can they be arranged? So we're starting off with five. We take one letter out, we have four and we just keep going downward. And again, you're multiplying each of those numbers and you will end up with the same number, 120. For B, how many ways can someone arrange three of the letters? So we're still talking about April and we're going to this time use three for what we're trying to select, but we still have five total. So out of the five, we're gonna pick three. So remember P, think of pick. So five factorial on the bottom, I take these two and I subtract them. And that's gonna give me that two factorial. And since I see two factorial, I don't have to count all the way down. In this case, it's okay to, but I could just say two factorial because I know I'm gonna get rid of the two factorials anyway. So five times four times three is 60. For example, two, seven students are running for student office. How many ways can three students be elected for the offices of president, vice president, and secretary? So you have to ask yourself, um, is this something that has to be in a certain order or not? And yes, because it has to be in a certain order because you can only have one president, one vice president, and one secretary. So therefore, we're going to use permutations, that formula. So how many people do we have total? We have to figure that out. We have seven people. That's what we were told in the scenario. So out of seven, we're going to pick three. Why three? Because we have a president, a vice president, and a secretary. So once we set that up, seven factorial, so that's always this first number. That's what's going to be in my numerator. The bottom number is the difference between seven and three, or those two numbers there, N and R, which is four factorial, and counting down seven all the way down to one, multiplying. And since I know I have a four factorial on the bottom, I can just go ahead and stop at four factorial, cross that out, multiply it. That's 210. For the next example, for your school pictures, you can choose four backgrounds from a list of 10. How many backdrops are possible? So here, order doesn't really matter, so I can use combination. So for my combination, I have a list of 10. So that's going to be 10. And then I'm going to choose four. So four backgrounds out of the 10 that's listed. How many backdrops are possible? I still want to take my total, 10, and use that in my numerator as a factorial. I still want to subtract 10 minus 4 for the bottom to get my 6 factorial. The difference between the permutation and the combination is I don't want to duplicate 
this the information so the number that's over to the right that i'm trying to select i want to go ahead and divide that out in the terms of a factorial so that's what it's going to look like once i set it up and then i'm going to take 10 and count all the way down to six factorial since i have a six factorial in the bottom and then in the bottom i have the six factorial but i want to take the four and go all the way down to one start crossing out what i can so i can get rid of the six factorial i can also divide nine by three which leaves me with a three and I can divide eight by four times two. That totally goes away. On the top, I'm still left with a 10 times three times seven. I don't have anything in the bottom except one, which I don't really need that. And so this is gonna give me 210 possible backdrops. For number four, the cheerleading squad is making posters. They have three different colors of poster board and four different colors of markers. How many different posters can be made by using one poster board and one marker. I want to know whether or not this is a combination or a permutation. And I recognize I don't have to do it in a specific order. So therefore, it's going to be a combination. And I see the word and, which tells me I'm going to be doing two things. And in probability type problems, and means to multiply. So my first option is how many different posters can be made by using one poster board? Well, I have three different color posters, so that's my total combination and how many am I choosing? Just one. So I'm going to multiply that because it says and one marker. Well, how many markers do I have? I have four. I'm going to be choosing one. When I set this up, I have the three in my numerator and that's going to be three factorial. And then on the bottom, I have three minus one, which is two factorial. But again, I don't want to duplicate, so the number that's closest to me, which is that one, I'm going to go ahead and write that also as one factorial. Then I'm going to multiply that times four, which is my total for my markers, factorial. And I'm going to divide that by four minus one, which is three factorial, and the number closest to me, which is one factorial. As I further simplify, three factorial is the same as three times two times, well, I can just say two factorial since the bottom has a two factorial. And then one factorial is simply one. That's gonna go away. Multiply it times four factorial, which is four times three. In this case, factorial, because I have a three factorial at the bottom, I can just stop. I don't have to keep going times one. And once I simplify this, this is simply three times four, which is 12, which is my final answer. Example five, there are 28 students in your math class. Your teacher chooses five students at random to complete a group presentation. Find the probability that you and your best friend are chosen to work in the group. Probability is a key word that we're going to look for. Now, this is an informal definition. of The first thing I want to work with is my total possible. So I have 28 students. I'm choosing five. But I know, but I'm being asked, what's the probability that me and my best friend are chosen to work in a group? So then I'm really only looking for three people now. So I'm choosing three and I'm no longer looking at 28 students because two of us are already accounted for. So that's gonna be 26 total this time. So that's how you set that up. Now, what I can do is put it in the formula form. So I have 26 factorial over 26 minus three is 23 factorial. I don't wanna duplicate the three, so three factorial. That is my numerator. All of that is divided by, and I'm gonna do the same thing. So my total is now 28 factorial. I wanna take 28 and subtract five from it. So that's gonna be 23 factorial. I don't wanna duplicate that five. So now I have five factorial. It will start to look messy. Um, you're gonna, we're gonna put this in Desmos in a few minutes, but I wanna show those people who wanna know how to do it by hand, how to do it. So, so in my numerator, I have 26, and I'm gonna count in descending order till I get to 23 factorial. In the bottom, I still have that 23 factorial, and I am going to take the 3 factorial and count down to 1. All of this is divided by 28 factorial, which I'm going to take 28, multiply all the numbers that's below it until I get to 23 factorial. And then I'm going to take 23 factorial, write that down, and I'm going to take 5 factorial and take all the numbers below 5 and multiply them. Now I'm going to start just getting rid of things. So I can start by taking the 23 factorial and get rid of that. And then if I wanted to, I can multiply three times two, which is six. 
And so 24 divided by six is gonna leave me with four. All of my numbers in my denominator are gone, so I'm just gonna go down to my other denominator for the other fraction. I can get rid of the 23 factorial. I can also get rid of 25 divided by five, which will leave me with five. And then four, 23 divided by four is six. I could combine some numbers down here, but I'm just doing one thing at a time. 27 divided by three is nine. 26 divided by two is 13. And all of my denominators there are gone. So now if I understand how a fraction divided by another fraction works, I will understand that I'm multiplying the reciprocal of the denominator here. So that's going to look like 26 times 25 times four. That's my numerator of my first fraction. Well, all of that is over one. And then I'm gonna multiply it by the reciprocal of this denominator. So that means I'm gonna flip it. And since I no longer have anything at the bottom except one, that one goes on top. And then I'm left with 28 times nine times 13 times five times six. I can further start simplifying by cross simplifying. And I can get rid of 25 divided by five is five. I can also take the 28 in the four. So four over 28 is really one seventh. So I'm gonna leave a seven there. And I think that's it. So now once I further simplify, going across, I have 26 times five. Those are the only two numbers left in my numerator. On the bottom, I have seven times nine times 13 times six. And once I multiply that out, that's 130 over 4,914. Or I can simplify this as well. And this is going to end up being 5 over 189. That's my final answer if you were doing it by hand. If you wanted to use Desmos, which I would strongly recommend, go to your scientific calculator. And then what you want to do is you can either, you're going to start off here on the main screen. You can click this um, icon and then go to function and you will see NCR. Or once you hit NCR, just hit your division symbol, your backslash on your keyboard. Either way, you'll get a fraction. Here you want to put whatever your total was. And our original total was 26 and we're choosing three. So I'm going to type in 26 comma three on my keyboard. Or you can go back to where it says main and just put the numbers in that way. And then you want to go down to your denominator, do the same thing. You want to take NCR. In our example, it was 28 and 5. So I'm going to type in 28 comma 5. And you will notice that it gives you a decimal equivalent, but I don't want the decimal, I want the fraction. So I'm going to click this button and I still see that I have 5 out of 180, which is what I said when I did it by hand. So that's it. Thumbs up, subscribe, have an awesome day. Subscribe.